My name is Dave Westenberg. I'm professor of biological sciences at Missouri University of Science Technology. And this year, I'm also the chair of the ASM Conference for Undergraduate Educators. And I'm here to tell you a little bit of a story. Okay. So I want you to take a moment, think about what was life was like 100 years ago, almost 100 years ago. You know, what was happening? You know, the world was coming off of a great world war, the Great War. Tens of millions of people had died in that war. Uh, we're coming off a great pandemic. The influenza pandemic had killed tens of millions more. So what was that like? What did we learn from those kinds of lessons? And one thing we learned was about the importance of common things like hygiene, the importance of global recognition of, of healthcare. And so I want to tell you a little bit of a story about what was life was like where I'm from, Rolla, Missouri, South Central Missouri, and what was happening at that time period kind of related to the story. And so in the 1920s, and earlier, where we were in Rolla, Missouri, in South Central Missouri, um, was really kind of the epicenter of a, another type of infectious disease called trachoma. Trachoma is one of these hideous um, infectious diseases, one of the leading causes of blindness. Um, many people were, were suffering from blindness because of this infection. And as we saw in other pandemics, uh, the people that suffered from trachoma were kind of stigmatized. People suffering from trachoma often were viewed as being unclean. They were unworthy of uh, being admitted into the country. A lot of people were denied admission because of this terrible disease. And so, of course, the U.S. coming off of a uh, great pandemic and learning the lessons that we had, uh, started looking into methods to monitor, control, and maybe perhaps eliminate some of these infectious diseases. We were within 50 years of Robert Koch developing his postulates. And so we have these strategies. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this strategy came and impacted things in our little neck of the woods in Rolla, Missouri. And so trachoma was uh, recognized as, this, uh, as an important disease in our area. The U.S. Public Health Service was developed in response to the great pandemic. And so the U.S. Public Health Service took con uh, concentrated efforts to try and, and monitor, control, and hopefully eliminate this disease. And so we had a trachoma hospital in Rolla, Missouri, and they were treating many patients, but we really didn't know how to prevent this disease, how to monitor it. And so what the U.S. Public Health Service does was send in their best and brightest scientists to come and investigate what's going on and see if they can find out what's causing this infection and perhaps, more importantly, treat the infections. And so the person they sent to us was this woman here, Ida Bankston, first woman hired by the U.S. Public Health Service in the 1920s. So Ida is an is a amazing figure. She got her bachelor's degree from the University of Nebraska in 1903. Ten years later, earned her master's degree, and then a little bit later, her PhD. Along the way, we learned that she worked for a couple of years with Alice Evans, the first president, female president of the American Society for Microbiology. And so she had worked with her on undulant fever and development of, of pasteurization as an important way to control infectious diseases. So Ida came to the um, Rolla, Missouri, and of course she's in Rolla. We have a university nearby, the Missouri School of Mines at the time, and recognizing they had an expert in this area, hired her as a lecturer at the university. Um, they put her in a little lab in the basement of uh, one of our campus buildings, and she went to work investigating trachoma. She spent countless hours infecting uh, rats and guinea pigs and looking for ways to figure out what was the causative agent of this disease and proceeded to effectively isolate the organism responsible, uh, came up with treatment strategies. And of course, this is the 1920s. We didn't have the, the widespread antibiotics that we know of today. There were some chemotherapeutic agents that had been developed, but we didn't have a lot of access to those materials. So she came up with strategies like simple hygiene washing your hands, you know, not spreading the, the, the disease, and was able to actually treat thousands of people during her six years in Rolla. She was able to uh, come up with strategies to prevent other people from getting infected. And so a really significant figure that's connected to our university. So really proud of Ida Bankston and her, her contributions to microbiology um, at a time when it wasn't really well recognized. And her impact goes even beyond what she did as far as treating the disease and the corrections that uh, she was able to make. Um, she also led to the um, production of a new trachoma hospital on our region. So this hospital was built after she had left in the 1930, um, but it's a building that still stands today. So it's a nice connection for my students to see this historical figure, a building we still see on campus that she's kind of behind making this go. So why am I telling you this story? What's this all about? And the, the purpose of telling this story is 
I like to teach my students about the history of microbiology, but I realized through my interaction with the American Society for Microbiology Conference for Undergraduate Educators, talking with colleagues, how do we make teaching more inclusive? How do we make our discipline more accessible to students? How do we get students to recognize themselves in the microbiologists that are in the history? And we all talk about Koch and Pasteur and, and Winogradsky, and you know, that litany of you know, old white farts is kind of a little bit uh, overwhelming to our students, and it's something that they can't really connect with. And so how do we bring in scientists that they can relate to? And so by telling this story to our students, they see that, yes, I can be a scientist. The challenges that Ida went through are inspiration for our students. And so this is the way to help students build those connections and make the microbiology that they're learning about much more meaningful. And so this is the impact. What I really want to kind of emphasize is being connected with an organization like the ASMQ, Conference for Undergraduate Educators, um, I learned so much about teaching. I've learned about connecting to students. And so I wanted to share these kind of stories with you to kind of hopefully inspire you to find ways to inspire that next generation of microbiologists. So that's one of my stories. Um, another story that kind of comes from this is, of course, uh, like many of us, we love giant microbes. And I have my collection of giant microbes. And I like to work with K-12 teachers. And so I reach out to teachers, I share with them my collection of microbes for them to use in their classroom. And one teacher one time asked me, can she borrow my collection? And so here are some of the giant microbes that, uh, that she received. And she was using this collection with her um, English language class. So again, it's not just about the science, but any way we can help students connect to something helps them to learn better. She was actually dealing with an English class uh, more for remediation. These are students that were in challenging classes that couldn't uh, be in the normal mainstream uh, English classes. And so she brought the classes into her students. And the stories that she would tell me that these students would write, she had students that were almost non-communicative that would write pages. And so when you find something that you can connect with, the impact it has on learning and interest and engagement is incredibly powerful. So these are all the things that you can get from being involved and interacting with your colleagues, getting that, that uh, response that we get, the kind of connections what we're looking for. That's what I'd like you to kind of get out of this presentation. So I like to tell stories. Um, obviously, I'm not a great storyteller, but I like to at least relate students to the material by telling them something that they can, can relate to. Um, another thing that students can relate to is games. So again, through ASMQ, I've learned that you can actually teach with games. You, know, you don't have to just stand up there and lecture. Get them involved, find a connection, how to do this. So when I'm teaching things like bioinformatics related material, doing um, uh, sequence analysis, you know, taking 16S sequences and looking for a search on the website, um, I first need to teach them about what does it mean to do a sequence alignment? There are games. There's a great game called Philo. I can send my students to the Philo website. It's actually a crowdsourcing game. So you actually do that, they're actually contributing to science by doing this game. And so now they can say, okay, this is how it works, but I can see how the value of this type of stuff can work. So doing games can be valuable, a great way for them to connect to the material. Um, we've got a great game called Pathogenesis that a, a colleague up in uh, Kansas City had made. This is also available. They, um, so this is a game, again, I can have the students play games, build some connections to it, and then realize, oh yeah, this is why we learn the things that we're learning in the classroom. So games are another powerful way to build those connections for our students. And then lastly, uh, humor. You know, to be relatable to your students, it's good to, to be yourself, to use your humor. Uh, I'm not the funniest person in the world, but I like to have a good time. I like to, to, to share ideas. And so I've found my access to all sorts of different cartoons, a great way to start the class, kind of break the ice, talk about the topics that we have, finding something relevant to our students. There's a, a, a great comic book I have out there called the uh, What's So Funny About Microbiology. Um, it's written by a, a German cartoonist. And so it has a lot of fun uh, cartoons. This one, for instance, when I'm talking about phototrophs, throw up this little cartoon, they at least have something they remember about phototrophs and the fun they have in the, in the salty seas and the, the great connections they might have. And so hopefully I've kind of give you an idea of, of what this is all about, why I use storytelling, why I like to share my awkward sense of humor, uh, why I like to introduce my students to games. It's all about trying to find ways to connect students to the material we have. And all of these things evolve because of my opportunities to go to the ASMQ conference, to talk with colleagues, learn what other colleagues are doing, uh, find some ideas, get their feedback to know what's working, what's not working, how to investigate what I'm doing, how to actually study 
What's the impact of these activities? It's one thing to do these things and say, oh, this is a great way to teach, but also realize that you need to really understand, is this really having an impact? I don't want to just do things just because it's fun to do. Well, I like to do things just because it's fun, uh, but it helps to actually do things that actually have a meaningful impact on our students and what they're able to do. So, so again, learning then how to study what I'm teaching is really a valuable experience that, again, has come out from being associated with ASMQ and the, the colleagues that have helped make these things work. Um, another last thing I'd like to, to add to that is also just doing these things for the sake of doing things is really um, kind of difficult uh, if you're just doing it and they're not a really a learning objective behind this. Um, I learned this, I had one opportunity a few years ago to put together a uh, presentation at ASMQ with some colleagues. Mark Martin, which I hope many of you have had a chance to meet Mark and his awesome impact on his undergraduates. Um, I, um, Phil Mixter from, from Washington State University. And we did a session on um, uh, edutainment, you know, educating through entertainment. And Phil wrote a great blog about uh, the experience of teaching through edu uh, entertainment and realizing, again, it's, it's great to entertain, it's great to help them have fun with what you're doing, but always think about just doing it for, do it for, the, for the fun is really not what it's all important about. It's all about getting students connected, helping them to learn, helping them to understand the connections to what they're doing, and hopefully retain the information that we're teaching them in our classes. So again, um, I hope to see many of you at ASMQ. We're gonna have ASMQ uh, this fall in November. Uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, we're gonna be affiliated with uh, Abercams, and so students, people that are coming to uh, ASMQ will also be able to attend Abercams for one day, um, get a little bit of a connection to what we're doing and how it impacts our students. Thank you.